Here is the ledger I created by painting notebook paper with water steeped in used coffee grounds. No need to waste coffee. I'm starting my drawing with a very soft stick figure sketch just to get the proportions set and make sure I have room for the entire drawing. If you can't see it on the video, that's probably a good thing. Because I am recreating the famous buffalo eagle designed by Chetan Sapa, Blackhawk, from the Itazipcho band of Lakota, I listed the Lakota names of colors along one side. I filled in the rest of the page with information about Hayoka, and I'll be sharing some of that throughout the video. Drawing on a page that is already full will be trickier, and is optional for this project. But it's an authentic challenge as we learn about this tradition of giving recycled paper a second life as art. Now I'm outlining the figures. I find it helpful to sketch lightly first and come back later to darken the outlines. Please note, I have my reference image in front of me for this entire process, which is sped up. The actual drawing took me almost 45 minutes, so don't stress out thinking this is a step-by-step -step tutorial you should be able to keep up with. The purpose of this video is to share some ideas you might find helpful and interesting. Although many designs are filled in with solid fields of color that would cover up this initial sketch, this thunder being and his buffalo eagle are mostly transparent. It's best to avoid using an eraser if you want to preserve the background of ledger text. I find it interesting that the thunder being has horns, because that's something Plains art seems to have in common with the art of the Coast Salish and the Northwest Coast First Nations here in the Pacific Northwest. Thunderbirds, for example, are often depicted as giant eagles with horns. It's a sign of their connection to the spirit world. Perhaps that's why the buffalo has an extra horn on its snout. The thunder being and the buffalo also have talons, like an eagle, instead of hooves, fingers, and toes. I'm curious about why only some are colored black. An important part of art history is asking questions. Sometimes we can learn more about the context of a painting, what was happening and what was important to people around the time the piece was created, and can make an educated guess based on that information. Sometimes, when the artist's not around to ask, those questions can't be answered. It's still important to wonder. Here I'm switching to my black colored pencil to create a really bold outline. The Heoka are a kind of ceremonial clown. Clowns are often depicted these days as being nothing more than silly people in costume. But clowning is a very serious role in cultures around the world. From the old women allowed to mock the chief in some Polynesian cultures, to court jesters of medieval Europe, to comedians who poke fun at current events using satire, clowns help maintain a balance of power within a society. Heoka ask difficult questions and say things others are too afraid to say, particularly to people of authority who might otherwise forget to think about the perspectives of others. Here I'm adding the squiggly outlines. Perhaps they are a way of showing the fuzziness of the bison. I think they signify the power, specifically electrical energy, of the thunder beings. Zigzag designs are often used to represent lightning. I picture this pair up in the clouds, surrounded by hail, totally charged up and ready to zap something at any moment. Now I'm coloring in the arm bracers and shin guards. I like how the Heoka and his mount have matching blue regalia. Heoka is also said to use the wind as sticks to beat the drum of thunder. I think that's what he's holding in this picture. Now for my favorite part of this drawing, the buffalo eagle's rainbow tail, which represents the entrance to the spirit world. Sa is red, Ziza is orange, Z is yellow, Tozi is green, or on the more yellow end of the spectrum. 
Ko is turquoise or bluish green, and Stanka is purple. Notice how Ziza and Tozi both combine the colors on either side, just as you would mix paint to make those colors. I don't know why Chaitan Sapa drew his rainbow colors in a different order. It could have symbolic significance. Perhaps he is depicting the Heoka true to character, breaking the laws of physics by rearranging refracted light. Heoka bring attention to what's normal by doing things differently. They might shiver and bundle up when it's hot, wear their clothes inside out, or talk backwards. They are allowed to break the rules. Sometimes this helps to reinforce why the rule is important, but it can also point out how a rule might be silly and need to change. This isn't a job you can just decide to have. It's a role granted by the Wakinyan, thunder beings of the West, through visions, a special kind of dream. That Chaitan Sapa dared to draw this vision was an act of rebellion, as many ceremonial practices he depicted in his art had been banned by the United States government in an effort to disempower Native communities. Memories of many traditions were preserved by Chaitan Sapa's art.